This video is to show you how to work problems at level one of AC mesh equations. Now AC mesh equations is actually very similar to DC mesh equations and you might even want to look at the video for that but um, I will actually work some problems here to illustrate exactly how it works. The main difference is that we are now in the phasor domain rather than in the uh, DC type of circuit. So as always, you can look at examples, um, which I would certainly recommend, but in the interest of time right now, I'm just going to work a problem. So let's do one at the easy level. So here are the instructions, and it basically tells you what to do. Um, and I have some SOT variables here, so I'm going to actually enter those first because those are the simplest type of equations to enter. So we have a SOT branch voltage, so I'm going to enter that. And I notice that that voltage appears across a resistor. And notice we've already defined the uh, currents for the interior meshes here. We've set the outer mesh current, uh, or the reference mesh, to be uh, zero. So we don't have that mesh current going around the outside. And so we're going to say V naught equals two. And then basically that's going to be an Ohm's law type of thing. There's one current going through that resistor. So we need one mesh current here that's not the reference current. And that's going to be I1 times 8 ohms. However, if we look at that, the current actually points into the negative side of the V0 voltage, which is the active sign convention. And remember that Ohm's law has a negative sign when you're using the active sign convention. So we have to put a minus sign in there or it would not be correct. So check that, and that is correct. Now for I0, we will select a SOT branch current option. And I0 now, um, for mesh analysis, I0 is this current down through this capacitor. That's going to be a difference of two non-reference mesh currents. So that's just going to be this type of term here. And I2 goes in the same direction as I0, so that'll have the plus sign. And I3 goes in the opposite direction. It goes up through the capacitor in the opposite direction to I0, and therefore it has a minus sign. So we have I2 minus I3, where that difference of mesh currents is actually the branch current I0, which goes down. Remember that only branch currents have physical significance. Mesh currents have no physical significance at all. And in fact, you could offset all of them by a fixed amount if you wish to do that. OK, so we're done with the SOT variable equations. The remaining thing now is to write KVL equations and since we have no current sources, we can do that for each of these three uh, non-reference meshes. So I'm going to pick KVL equation. And it'll warn me not to combine terms um, by mentally adding things in series or something of that nature. OK, so let's do mesh one first. And I'm going to start, as always, in the lower left-hand corner and go clockwise in the direction of the mesh current. That's probably the easiest way to do it since uh, Circuit Tutor uses the more common clockwise convention. You can use counterclockwise, but um, Circuit Tutor actually defines them to be in the clockwise uh, direction, which is the most commonly used uh, convention. So first of all, we're going to have the voltage of a voltage source. So that would just be a term like this. And then we're going to have a uh, voltage across this inductor, which has two mesh currents going through it. So we need a difference of mesh currents there. And then the third one has only one non-reference mesh current, so that would just be one current times that impedance is equal to zero. So we sum those voltages around that closed loop, as always, by Kirchhoff's voltage law, which, remember, is the basis for all of mesh analysis. Um, that must sum to zero, then. The sum of the voltage drops around any closed loop is zero. So the first voltage drop, well, this is actually a rise, isn't it? Because we're going from the negative side of the 1S to its positive side. So we have to put a minus sign there because it's actually a rise. And then the value of VS, uh, V1S rather is 5 angle 0. So we could put 5 angle 0. Now if I wanted to, um, I could get rid of this minus sign by changing that to a plus and changing the angle here, the phase angle, to 180 degrees. Because you remember that one angle 180 degrees is just the polar form of negative 1 when you're using complex numbers. So that would be equivalent, and I'll just put it in that form here, although it doesn't really matter. I could have done it the other way as well. Both ways will be accepted. Now the second voltage drop will be going down through the J7 ohms, and notice that I1 then 
goes into the positive side of that voltage. Think of the plus side as being here, the negative side being here. So I1 obeys the passive sign convention. So we're going to have I1 minus I2 times that J7 ohms. And so basically, with respect to I2, we're using the active sign convention because I2 actually enters the negative side of that drop. The drop always goes from plus to minus. That is because we're going in the clockwise direction to count the drops. Okay, the last term would be for the 8 ohm. So we have there just one non-reference mesh current, I1, times the 8 ohms. And that, again, will be a passive sign convention by default. And that is the correct equation. Now we'll do it for mesh 2, write another KVL equation. And this has only two elements, but each one is shared between two non-reference meshes. So we will have a difference mesh currents in both cases there. And that will, as always, sum to zero by KVL. So going clockwise again, starting in the lower left corner and going up, then I will have I2 has the passive sign convention. And I1 has the active sign convention because it's actually flowing down. So the net current going up is I2 minus I1. It's another way of thinking of that. Then that multiplies the impedance, J7, and that will give us the voltage drop across the inductor. Then across the capacitor, now I'm going down because I'm going in a clockwise direction, again, always in the direction of the mesh current arrow. And so that would be I2 minus I3 because I2 goes in the direction of being down and I3 goes actually up. So that has to have a minus sign. And again, this has nothing to do with the I0 that's indicated here. Um, I0 has nothing to do with the fact that we're adding the voltage drop in this direction. So no matter which way this points, um, this term would be the same. Okay, so we have I2 minus I3 times the negative J1 ohm. Or if you like, you can write it as 1J, or we could just write negative J is fine too. Okay, and so that's accepted, and now our last task is to write it for mesh 3. So again, I'm going to start in the lower left-hand corner and add voltage drops going clockwise around that loop. So again, I'm using the uh, I3 is going in that direction. I2 is opposite to that direction. Again, I0 not, I here is completely irrelevant for doing this. So first I have a difference of two non-reference mesh currents, and then one non-reference mesh current going through 5 ohms, and then a voltage drop, which would be a fixed voltage because it's a voltage source. And that sums again to zero. So going upwards through the capacitor, I will have I3 minus I2 times the negative J1. And again, I'm using the tab key to go quickly between these fields to make it faster to basically be able to work the problem. And then through the 5 ohm, I tab over here, and I have just I3 times the 5 ohms. And finally, the voltage drop, um, we're encountering the negative sign first. So this is actually a voltage rise because we're, we're going in a clockwise direction from low voltage to high voltage. Therefore, we have to subtract this because we're trying to add voltage drops rather than voltage rises. So we have to put a minus sign here. And then we'll put in the value of V2S, which we see is 5 angle 180 degrees. Now, we could make this a plus and make this 0 degrees. That would be equivalent but I'll just leave it like this this time. Okay, we have now written all of the required equations, so we just click the No More Equations button. And we would have the option here to get a detailed explanation where it actually highlights, um, it actually shows you these voltage drops explicitly. So if you're having trouble understanding any of this, this might be useful to look at either examples or the solution to problems after you work them. Um, to actually view these voltage drops explicitly shown for this mesh. And then the color coding here corresponds to the color of those low voltage drops. And we can see that for each of those three uh, KVL equations that we've written here. And so that might be helpful to you if you're a little bit uncertain as to how to do this. Okay, thank you.